Okay, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to uh, import uh, matrix summary data that's saved in an SPSS file into uh, Amos in, in order to run a path analysis. So uh, what we have right here, we have a table that contains mean standard deviations and correlations for a set of variables. Uh, and we also, so that's table three. And then we also have a figure four that contains the model that we're, we are going to be testing. And this comes from a demonstration uh, article from 2004 by Stage Car Carter and uh, Nora from, uh, basically it's published in Journal of Educational Research. The article is called Path Analysis and Introduction and Analysis of a Decade of Research. So we're going to go down to our uh, table again. And before we actually start uh, typing everything in, I've, I have a, a file open that contains uh, an example. So this is um, essentially the summary data that's contained in that table uh, that I've put into SPSS. And so you'll notice that we have uh, uh, various columns here with, with different names. First column says row type underscore, uh, and the second column says var name underscore. And uh, then we have the actual names of our variables. You'll see that um, within uh, rows one through five, you can see that we have uh, our variable names under the var name column. We have uh, C-O-R-R under the row type, and then you can see that we have entered um, the lower uh, triangle of a correlation matrix that's appearing within the article. I've also included uh, means for each of the variables, so right here, and then the standard deviations for the variables, and then the total effective sample size for the set of variables is 3747. So we're going to enter that as well. So again, all that information is provided uh, within this table. So to start off with, let's open up a new file. So I'm just going to go File, New, uh, go to uh, Data. And so this is SPSS new file. We're going to go under Variable View, and under Name, we're going to type in Row Type Underscore. And so you can see it looks like there's, it seems like there's an error message. It's just basically saying that there are certain uh, names that are special within uh, SPSS. It's just basically saying um, if you're not uh, inputting data in this fashion, you don't want to use that name. Uh, next, we'll type in V-A-R-N-A-M-E-S, our variable, na uh, variable name, uh, right there. So it's, um, you can see right here. Uh, also, don't forget the underscore, which I did. And there you go. So where it says type, we're going to change this to string. And I'll go ahead and just change the number of characters to 15. That's just the maximum number of characters. Uh, I'll do the same for the next one. Okay, so next what we'll do is we will enter the names of our variables. So I'm going to, uh, the first variable will be um, that appears in, in our uh, table as family composition, second one socioeconomic status, math achievement, math attitudes, and math uh, challenging math units. So we'll, uh, we'll add in all of those in that order. So we'll type in, I'm just going to type in family comp, then um, SES, then math ACH for achievement, then math ATT for math attitudes, and then I'll just put in challenge for the last variable right here. So we'll go under data view, and now you can see we have each of our variables uh, appearing in these columns. So the next step is under var name, we're going to type in our, our the, the same names that are, are appearing in the as column headers here. So make sure that it's exactly the same. So I'll type in family comp. SES, math, ACH, math, ATT, then challenge. Next, we'll type for row type, we'll type in CORR for each of these. Um, and just note that uh, within the article that they provided, they included uh, essentially the, you, you have the same values reproduced above and below the primary diagonal. So you don't really have to do that. Um, so we're not gonna we're not gonna bother doing that in this case. We're just gonna use the lower triangle. So I'm gonna type in ones along the principal diagonal here, and then start entering the values within the correlation matrix. Also note, you'll notice that uh, they're giving you uh, correlations rounded to three decimal places. I'll go ahead and, and um, go under variable view, and I'll just raise this up to three uh, for decimal so that you can see um, each of the the values as they're appearing. 
or as I'm typing them in. Um, okay, so now we'll type in the first one is 0.152, then we have 0 0.096, 0 0.043, 0 0.109, then we have 0 0.4, oops, then uh, negative 0 0.016, then 0 0.297, then 0 0.092, uh, 0.382, and then right here we have a 0 0.103. So now we've entered the correlation matrix. Um, I can enter the means if I want. I can I'll type in mean, and you don't really have to type in the means, but there are some analyses where you might want to to have the means. So, but in this case, I'll just type in mean. Then uh, uh, using the order in which they're presented within this table, uh, we'll start with 0.7. 337 and then proceed onward. So I'll type in 0 0.7337, then uh, 2.73, 46.997, then we have 2.6002, and then 1.791 right here. Next, we'll type in the standard deviations. So we'll type in STDDEV. And uh, using the same order uh, in which they appear in the table, 0 0.4421, uh, 1.088, uh, 8.5073, 0 0.47, and 1.1249. Okay, so at this point, we're ready. Uh, uh, well, no, we're not ready yet because we have to have our sample sizes. So we'll type in N, and then our sample size. So it's 3747. And we can just type that in across, or I'm just going to actually copy this and paste it in uh, for these um, cells right here. So we'll paste that in. And now we can save this, and then we're ready to import it. So uh, this is just from our previous one. I'll just create a new version of this. I'll just call this v2.save here, uh, Stage Carter North 2004 v2.save, and I'll click on save. And so now it's ready to, to uh, be imported into Amos. So here I've opened up the Amos, a blank Amos uh, file, and so now we're going to start drawing the model that appears right here. So first, uh, I tend to prefer a larger drawing space, so I'm going to go under uh, View and Interface Properties. Paper Size, I'm going to go down to Landscape Legal, hit Apply, and that gives me a lot more white space here to draw. So when you, cl <clears throat> when you click on our box right here to draw our observed variables, I can just draw it out right here. And then I can keep drawing, or um, I tend to prefer to keep all my shapes the same size and, and orientation. So I'm going to click on Duplicate Objects here. Uh, it's basically a copier, and then just copy. Um, then, uh, you know, you, you uh, draw, drag your cursor over it, click, uh, and hold. And then basically you can just keep, you know, drawing out um, the uh, observed variables. So now we have our five variables. Um, drawn out or the boxes for those five variables. I'm going to click off of copy right here and I'm going to go ahead and import the data. So I'm going to go to select data and go to file name and click on the, the um, SPSS file that contains our um, summary data. Click on open. And so you can see right here it, uh, it shows uh, there's our N. So we're good. And, and the actual uh, file name right here as well. So I'll click on OK and uh, we'll go to list variables in data set and we can just basically click and drag so i'm going to click this drag it over here we have ses uh, right here we had um, in the figure we had math achievement appearing uh, right here math attitude right here and challenge right here um, so next we're, we're going to draw our arrows so we'll we'll draw a single headed arrow from here to here and then from here to here, and then from uh, SES to challenge as well. We had SES going to math achievement, or math attitudes and math achievement. We had family comp going to math attitudes and math achievement, but not, there's no direct effect from SES to, uh, from math, uh, family comp to challenge like there is from SES to challenge. So this is the basic model right here. Um, Next, I'm going to click on Add a Unique Variable to Existing Variable. So all of these uh, math attitudes, achievement, and I'm just going to click several times around to move this, 
and challenge, all of these are endogenous variables within the model. So they have to have error terms associated with them. So um, essentially that's what we're establishing. So I'm gonna click off of this and you can right click on the object and what we have to name these uh, error terms. So I'm gonna right click, go to object properties. I'm gonna call this variable name E1, oops. And then I can also, I can go you know down here, click on it and I can type in E2 for variable name and then right here E3 for variable name. Click out and there you go. Okay, so the next thing to note um, is that within the, the figure, they don't actually include a covariance between family composition and socioeconomic status. And so, um, but uh, it appears after I ran it that they must have in order to get um, the coefficients to uh, be exactly the same and as well as the, the fit statistics. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, add an error code, or excuse me, add a covariance between family composition and SES. So I'm going to go up here to draw covariances, double-headed arrow, and uh, there you go. So now it's drawn in and we're about ready to run our model. So the next step, uh, we're going to go to analysis properties. Uh, and so you'll see that uh, the, um, the estimation approach, we're using maximum likelihood, that's our default. We'll go under output and we'll go ahead and click on standardized estimates and squared multiple correlations. I'll also click on modification indices as well, just to kind of um, show you uh, that. So we'll click out and uh, I'm going to save this now. So I'm going to go to file, save as, and we'll just call this uh, stage Carter Nora 2004 V2 as well. And we'll click on save. <coughs> and there you go. So now we're ready to run the analysis. So I'm going to click on uh, this uh, button right here where it says calculate estimates. And so when we toggle over, you'll see that we have the unstandardized estimates within the model, and then these are the standardized estimates. And within the uh, article, they actually provide, uh, within that figure, they are the estimates are all standardized. So um, now, if I wanna move things around, like you can see <coughs> right here, we've got the 0.05 and 0.39 kind of overlapping. Uh, I can clean this up by just clicking on add, move parameter values, and then uh, highlight the path, and uh, I can move this around a little bit and I can do the same thing for this one to kind of clean it up. So there you go. So you'll notice within the standardized solution, uh, you know, these are the R square values right here, essentially zero for math attitudes. <clears throat> then we have uh, challenge, 17% of the variance is accounted for by math attitudes, math achievement and SES. And then 16% of the variance in math achievement is accounted for by SES and family composition. And again, if I wanted to look at the uh, unstandardized estimates, I can click on that as well. Note too that uh, within the standardized uh, solution, this is the correlation between um, our two exogenous variables. So just keep in mind too that uh, an endogenous variable uh, is one that has arrows pointing to it and uh, the variances, uh, we're, we're modeling the variances being explained by uh, variables upstream. Uh, so all three of these are endogenous variables. Exogenous variables do not have uh, arrows pointing uh, to them from other variables. So SES and family composition are both exogenous variables within the model. Now if I want to look at the uh, output, I'll click on view text right here, go to um, model fit. So if I want to look at the model fit in uh, statistics, uh, then I can kind of uh, clean this up a little bit. You can see that uh, this is the um, chi-square value, degrees of freedom for the model, p-value. This is chi-square degrees of freedom ratio. You have the CFI presented right here and the TLI right here. Um, in the article, the authors reference the TLI, um, and so uh, they, 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 you'll find this uh, value right here. Uh, interestingly, they don't refer to the CFI. So just kind of keep in mind that probably, you know, when you're reporting your results, you'll want uh, TLI and CFI values um, uh, optimally, uh, uh, you know, 0.95 or greater, but it's acceptable to have values as low as 0.9. So you see the CFI looks good, but the TLI, uh, not so much. So you have sort of a mixed bag in terms of evidence of fit. Um, 
with respect to the uh, RMSEA, which is the other uh, index that they refer to uh, in the article, it's 0 0.083. And uh, this is a little bit on the high side, but still, um, you know, I guess you could say, you know, fairly acceptable, although it's, 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 it's like I said, it's on the high side. Uh, generally, values up to about 0 0.80 are actually considered uh, acceptable. So that I guess you could say technically this is a little bit uh, greater than that. So um, at any rate, so you, again, you have sort of a mixed bag in terms of um, uh, the quality of the fit or how well the model is fitting. Um, next, we'll go under estimates and take a look at them. You can see that we have the um, unstandardized estimates right here that are presented. So these are the unstandardized path coefficients. You have their standard errors. Uh, critical ratios, these are all Z values right here. I think um, in the, the uh, uh, their article they were presenting uh, T values, which uh, given the sample size, they're going to be about the same. Um, you also have your P values that are presented as well. You've got the standardized regression weights uh, that are uh, presented right here. So just keep in mind that when you're toggling back and forth between unstandardized and standardized estimates, those are the same values that are appearing uh, within your table for the, the unstandardized estimates here and the standardized estimates here. The uh, covariance between SES and family comp is this right here. There's a significance test of it. The correlation is the 0.15 that we saw previously with the standardized solution uh, right here. Um, let's see, other things to note, uh, you'll see down below you've got the squared multiple correlations. These are R square values. Um, and so all of these values are what are appearing uh, within the figure. So that concludes this uh, demonstration related to inputting uh, matrix summary data uh, into, into uh, SPSS and uh, running a path analysis.